fixed asset groups after depreciation methods it is fixed asset groups so what are fixed asset groups or how we can group fixed assets in business so just like how we group vendors and how we group customers we can also group fixed assets fixed assets that are having the same kind of nature same kind of nature in the sense which always have the same kind of uh, service life or the same kind of depreciation methods followed most of the time depreciation methods would be same for most of the fixed assets but depending on the service life and the nature of the fixed asset nature of the fixed asset means in business there have there will be lot of fixed assets we can categorize the fixed assets like electronic equipment what are that fall into electronic uh, fixed assets so that would be considered as electronic fixed assets then office equipment office equipments like computers or you know key, anything keyboards and all so that could be considered an office equipment or that can be considered separately as computers sometimes they will group some they means computers separately computers monitors everything they will group it in one group called as computers coming to furniture you, you will have your furniture in the office right chairs sofas office chairs cabins everything can be considered under furniture vehicles so you will have your vehicles if it is a factory you have your loading vehicles or cars or anything that in the business if it is a hospital you have ambulances so that would be covered under vehicles plant and machinery so definitely there will be plant and machinery in a manufacturing company so machineries can be categorized again into groups or all the machinery can be kept under one group called as machinery group so again land and buildings can be categorized as one group because they are having one kind of nature and what else we have so depends on business and nature of the business you will have different types of fixed assets in the business so we can create groups for all these fixed assets and every time you create a fixed asset you will link the group of the fixed asset so it is necessary that you should it's a compulsory thing that you have to definitely link a fixed asset group to the fixed asset whenever you create a fixed asset so fixed asset group also offers lot of options and parameters within the group so which would normally guide how the asset have to perform and all so let's see how we can create fixed asset groups so generally to create fixed asset groups you can go to the same page set up here you have this option called as fixed asset groups so depreciation profiles is covered then we are going to discuss about fixed asset groups i'll just click here on fixed asset groups click on new i'll just create a group called as vehicles group or uh, i can just give it as fa vehicle group name so vehicles so I just give it as so save it then what kind of a vehicle it is tangible what kind of an asset it is tangible asset intangible asset financial asset land and buildings goodwill or other so we have this land and buildings also fall into tangible goodwill also fall into intangible so actually we have this option so dynamics provides these options as well in separately if at all they have to clearly maintain but it is a tangible asset right so you can select a tangible fix tangible major type actually major type is not necessary you can group your selected top level asset classifying for reporting purpose only only for reporting you can give some major type here if you want to it's not a compulsory field then you have auto number fixed assets so if you want your separate sequence for your vehicles like vehicle number 1 vehicle number 2 or vehicle number 00001 00002 you can create a number sequence here you can enable this option auto number fixed assets create a number sequence code for your fixed assets that you are going to create under this particular group i'm going to create one just give it a same name fa vehicle fa vehicle and it's company specific 
REL. Okay. And I don't want the company name in it. Constant, I'll keep it as vehicle first time WH and I'll keep four digits. I assume that I won't have more than thousand vehicles in my business as far as I continue. So I'll keep it as vehicle double one double one or it will give you 9999 right option until so there won't be any vehicles more than 9999 until it is a vehicle manufacturing company. <laughs> so then I'll keep it as continuous. And I'll keep four digits here as well. Next is one and I'll save it. Created, yes, just copy this. Go back. Paste it here. So the number sequence is assigned to the group. Then you can also give barcodes to your fixed assets. Auto barcodes you can give and you can give a number sequence for the barcodes as well. If you want to maintain a separate barcode number sequence for the fixed assets, like uh, it's any numbers that you want in business, so you can maintain barcodes, but barcodes are optional. Not, I don't see anyone maintaining barcodes for fixed asset, but Dynamics provides that option to maintain barcode numbers for fixed assets so that you can print the barcodes and paste it on the fixed asset. Suppose if you are buying 100 laptops at a time, you don't know which laptop is what, right? So you can create your own barcodes in your company and paste stickers as barcodes in behind the laptop. When you are issuing laptop to the employees, you will have the track. Who is whenever you scan the barcode, you will have the track that when this asset is bought and which asset number it is in the recorded in the dynamics and like that. So you can maintain such barcode sequence if necessary. If not, leave it as it is. Property type, yes, it is fixed asset or continuing property. Continuing property in the sense sometimes construct buildings which are under construction is are considered to be continuing property and all you can see. Select the property type fixed assets in this group. Select fixed asset to process regular assets in the usual manner. Select continuing property to capitalize it property that exists for inventory purposes only, such as this is saying like phones, radios or mobile devices that fall below the capitalization threshold. Typically you enter a service life of zero for continuing property assets and exclude continuing property assets from the valuation report that you reconcile when with the general ledger. Select other display intangible assets separately on the balance sheet. This field is used only for the report searches. As they were saying, the property type field is only helpful for reporting purpose. In that you can use this continuing property for miscellaneous fixed assets like mobile phones, radios or anything that doesn't really have a service life. For mobile phones and all, actually it's up to you. Either you have to maintain it as a fixed asset we're giving a service life like three years or five years, you can do that. But if you don't want to maintain and give the service life as zero itself and just keep it as a fixed asset. So for such kind of fixed assets which are below the threshold limit. So you have this option here called as threshold limit. Threshold limit in the sense, suppose if I give a threshold limit here as 2500. Example, whatever the asset that I acquire for 2500 or above 2500 only considered for depreciation. The assets that I buy for any amount less than 2500 are not considered for depreciation. They are maintained as fixed assets, but depreciation is not calculated on such fixed assets. Either you use them as long as they work and you will throw them off or you will scrap them or if you want to sell them, you can sell them, but you don't calculate any depreciation when they are below the threshold. In India, if the fixed asset value is below 5000, I think they don't depreciate. No, no, not below 5000, below 1000. I think they don't depreciate the fixed asset. So we have threshold limits according to the Companies Act so I mean, or the Authority Act or the gap ideas, the gap rules. Suppose here, for example, if I take 2,500, as I was saying, if I buy any fixed asset in this particular vehicles group, which is less than $2,500, so I don't have to depreciate it. So you can consider such kind of continuing threshold. So if you are separately maintaining a group for such kind of assets, which you don't depreciate and which are one time use or you don't have any constant depreciation on such assets, so you can maintain them as continuing property. Otherwise, most of the times it is fixed asset only. If there is anything like intangible or anything you can give other, but most of the times it is fixed asset. I'm just come to the point of threshold again. 
so you can give location id for your group generally for the group you don't have to give location id for each fixed asset you can give location so which we are going to discuss further okay for the group you don't have to provide a location then you have gis layer id gis is a tracking system geographic information system where this particular asset is located you can give a gis id it's a third party app gis database is a third party application that typically is used to track land and infrastructure so not for the fixed asset group you don't have to give a gis layer id but for a fixed asset separately you can give suppose if there is a land where that particular land is located you can give a gis id so the longitude and latitude uh, points of that exact land location or the building location in which are immovable assets only you can give gis id movable assets you can move from one place to another place right there is no requirement for giving gis layer id or the location id for such such fixed assets which are movable but immovable assets like plant and uh, buildings land like that so then you can give that uh, layer id if you want to then the replacement cost factor insured value factor so enter the percentage of increase or decrease of the replacement cost of the fixed asset 3.5% more than this year to replace the asset in the group. So example like suppose if this asset you are if you have to replace the fixed asset after one year, how much cost it would increase in the market? Suppose this one asset in the group if you bought for 1000 or sorry 10,000 let's say and if you want to buy the same fixed asset next year, it might cost 11,000. There will be a 10% hike in the uh, acquisition value or the market value of the asset there can be chances so in order to replace the fixed asset in case of any damage or in case of anything that that happens and if you want to replace it how much extra it will cost for you you, know, you can say like 10 percent replacement cost factor in order to replace the fixed asset so it would differ again so it's not compulsory that you maintain in the replacement cost factor and you don't use anyway it's just only for the record sake you maintain replacement cost factor if at all there is a replacement hike in the group of value of this particular fixed assets in the group you can give a constant replacement factor for all the fixed asset groups but you can also separately give replacement cost factor for each single fixed asset as well which you create then issued value factor it's also the same enter the percentage increase or decrease in the insured value of the fixed asset for example if the asset in this group are insured for amount that are 1.5 percent lower this year enter 1.5 percent uh, enter minus 1.5 percent it is saying suppose every year if you are insuring the fixed asset let's say the total group value of the fixed assets total group value of the fixed asset is like 1 lakh there are 10 fixed assets in vehicles and all of them combinedly making one lakh let's say you are today this year you are insuring the fixed assets for one lakh amount or total value of the fixed asset is one lakh right so you are insuring them for some percentage so next year the asset value will anywhere reduce and next year if you want to insure them you will insure them on the net book value of the fixed asset so there will be certain decrease in the insurance factor or the amount of insurance premium that you pay next year will be little less comparatively according to the netbook value since it is reduced so for that that's what they are asking if you there is such kind of reduction you can give something like minus 1.5 or minus 2 insured value factor reduction depending upon the netbook value reduction on the fixed asset values if you don't want to maintain don't have to maintain not compulsory that i don't see any client maintaining this replacement cost factor and insured value yeah. factors but for record sake they can maintain these fields but this one is important capitalization threshold as i told you enter the amount at which new fixed assets that are based on this fixed asset group are set up to depreciate by default when they are acquired for example if you enter 2500 to keep the depreciation field cleared in the books form when a new fixed asset is in this group is posted with an acquisition amount of 2400 see of course if you enter 2500 here and if you buy an asset for 2400 that asset that asset will not be depreciated there is a field called depreciate fixed assets in fixed asset books which we are going to discuss further that will get automatically disabled and it will not calculate depreciation on the fixed asset if it is below the capitalization threshold 
if the acquired fixed asset value is above the capitalization threshold it will calculate depreciation according to the depreciation methods that you assign to the fixed asset so that's how this capitalization threshold work and again this capitalization threshold is also having some parameters in the fixed asset parameters if you enable them then only this work if you don't enable them then it will not work okay so this will be guided by the parameters in the fixed asset parameters page so for each group you can give capitalization threshold any vehicle that is bought under 2500 will not be considered as a asset which is depreciated if it is bought for 2500 or more than that then it will be depreciated that's all you can then remove this capitalization threshold option then you can go for image you can upload an image for the vehicle vehicles group It's typically for group we don't have any image but for each vehicle that we going to buy we can click an image and we can upload it in dynamics i'll show you that part how we can upload an image for a vehicle when we create a fixed asset in the group then we will add a image for that vehicle okay you can also create one more group called as fa if you are furniture furniture fixed assets tangible only okay auto number fixed assets so you can create a separate group auto and fixed asset numbers for this Make it if you are sorry. Company lines. Remove constant. If you are four and continuous, only four. Save it and just copy this. Close it and paste it here. Consider the number sequence that we have created. Okay, then all of them are optional again. You don't have to give everything that you want you know, that are required here. So two books are created. You can create as many books as you want, like electronic equipment, office equipment, again computers, softwares, intangible assets, goodwill. In intangible assets group you can create, or software assets group you can create. up to you depending on the nature of the company and business they will have their own fixed assets and they can group their fixed assets accordingly and that would be all in mean, regarding the fixed asset grouping 